Yes. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Conversations with Calvin. We the species. Uh, and I am looking. Uh, hey, uh, we're nine days to Christmas. You know, I'm, I'm counting down here. Of course, this will probably be seen in early January because everybody's away for Christmas. Uh, in the Northeast might have a big snowstorm for Christmas, which is great. Uh, uh, importantly, uh, I've been chatting with Thomas Tom Paladino uh, about scalar energy. Uh, I've done my due diligence uh, in researching it and I'm digesting it. And there's a million questions to ask. Uh, and, and I said to Tom before he went in there, and, and it's kind of a mantra for me. Uh, I call my channel We the Species. Um, and we the species think we know a lot, but we don't. So it's a constant learning thing. And as I, I I'm so fascinated by the work that, that Tom does. And I know there's just so many things. There's always an article coming out. We think we know this, but boom. Uh and 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 that's one of the great things about the species is we uncover and we learn and explore and use the tools that we're given. So the official title, uh, Thomas Palladino, Scalar Energy Researcher, Healing, Spiritual Awakening. And, and I asked Tom if he would say a few words about uh, addictions, black holes, which is interesting, colonizing Mars, and uh, intermittent fasting, of which Tom and I are both byproducts of, interestingly. So that's a little commonality. So my monologue is over. And and I'm, I want to just turn it over uh, to Tom, uh, if you do a, just a little couple couple lines of background, and then we'll jump into okay. um, questions. Okay. All right. Calvin, thank you for the invitation. Yes, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Tom Palladino. I am a researcher. I research what is known as scalar light or zero point energy. This is not electricity. And I want to make this, this very apparent. There's two energy. There's, there's two force fields, electromagnetic energy and scalar energy. And the reason I, I have this proclivity for scalar energy, it's much more versatile. It's free energy. It's clean. It far surpasses that of the electromagnetic energy spectrum in potential. So the great prospect, the future, rests in scalar energy, not electromagnetic energy. Electromagnetic energy has many drawbacks. Uh, scalar energy in a vis-a-vis -vis comparison is, is unlimited. Uh, and it, the potential is just is, is, is incredible what we can do with this energy. So we're going to speak about this other energy, scalar energy. It's the energy that drives the universe. What do I mean by that? Scalar energy is sunlight or starlight. And I have developed instruments that capture that energy. So wow. I'm working with scalar energy. I'm not working with electricity. Okay. Okay. So um, where does scalar energy uh, originate from and, and kind of describe what it is? I believe this energy is, is omnipresent. It transcends time and space. I believe it's the, the light of God. God is everywhere. So this is the omnipresence of God. And I could prove that because when you tap into this energy field, you don't have to worry about delivering the signal. In other words, the signal pre-exists. It's everywhere. So if, if the limit to a, a, the electromagnetic spectrum is 186,000 miles per second, there's no limit to the transmission of scalar energy. It's an instantaneous communication wow. because it's everywhere, meaning if you if you have a, a velocity, a top velocity for the electromagnetic spectrum at 186,000 miles per second, that's that's the limit. Whereas scalar energy is everywhere. So it's not traveling from point A to point B. It pre-exists. Some, some physicists might call that quantum entanglement, or others might call that the, the continuum of the universe, or some people might call that the alpha and omega. So let me make this very clear. This dimension is everywhere. It transcends time and space. Why? Scalar energy is the cause of time and space. Scalar energy dictates time and space. Oh. Uh, whereas oh, the electromagnetic spectrum is, is 
is dependent upon time and space. So I want to work with the cause. The first principle of the universe is scalar energy. Wow. Interesting, interesting. Um, how, how does it transmute matter? Mm -hmm. um, it, th this energy, <clears throat> consider it to be an information system, a, a vast universal information system that's capable of an infinite number of instructions. How how does scalar energy transmute or change uh, transmute matter or change one physical form into another by instructions? For instance, <clears throat> I can program my instrument to look at a photograph of vitamin E. And then I can download that instruction into me or a person or any person or any animal. And this photograph carries instructions for my elements in my body to transmute, to rearrange into vitamin E. Wow. So a scalar energy instrument can take the instructions and you can ask a scalar energy instrument to work with the existing proteins and elements in the human body and rearrange those elements and proteins into a vitamin or an antioxidant. That's all done by way of light instructions. It's not a chemical process. I don't work in the, with biochemical uh, 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 processes. This is not a physical process. It's non-physical instructions. And I'm working in a different dimension. This is not Newtonian physics. This is scalar physics. This is a new physics textbook. I'm trying to process this. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm completely fascinated by this um, because I know things exist in, in our world that we just don't, I mean, I don't know it. I sense it. And, and so this is fascinating. Um, you see, you described a, a Photograph. So, how does scalar energy work through a, a, a photograph? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, I work with what's known as quantum healing or, or quantum wellness. I don't work with people. In a scalar energy paradigm, I work with photographs. I'm holding up my photograph. If I were to place my photograph in a scalar energy instrument, the instrument would look for my energetic copy or my fingerprint or call it signature and would find me. Now, let me give you an analogy. If I can locate somebody and send a signal to their cell phone, right, right. then I can locate somebody and send a signal to their quantum field. Oh, wow. And everybody is unique. Yes. So you have a unique phone number. That's yours. If I wanted to call you up, Calvin, I would use your phone number to call you up. And if I wanted to access your quantum field, I would need your photograph, which is represents your scalar energy identification. Well, uh, I, I gotta uh, digress for one second and 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 let the audience know and uh, that uh, on your website, scalarlight.com, there uh, under your blog, there are hundreds of entries on just about everything you can imagine. And some of those I threw into the discussion, you know, from black holes to landing on Mars to intermittent fasting. It's a wealth of practical. I mean, we're talking practical information tied into scalarlight.com, but your 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 website, your blog is wonderful. It's a journey. And I'm, I'm not I'm I'm not saying it. I mean I've been there several times and I started to look at things, even the spiritual awakening, which we talked about. So it's a great, it's a great blog. It's a great website, really uh, interesting stuff. Um, so what would you say is the, the, uh, the future uh, of scalar uh, energy um, and how can it make our world better? Because our world needs a lot of help. We yeah, I believe in results. I believe in improving the world condition. So I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to preface it with this comment. Keep in mind, scalar energy is free energy from the sun and the stars. It's clean. It's non-physical. They are instructions. So it's, this is not a chemical process. Hence, there's no residue. There's no carbon footprint, etc. 
the world would benefit from clean, unlimited energy from the sun and the stars. So what do I propose? That we eventually transition from our existing paradigm to a scalar energy paradigm in which we can solve the energy crisis with an infinite amount of energy from the sun and the stars. We can address pollution because scalar energy is not a chemical. It's non-physical, but it can it has kinetic potential. And the, the fact that we want a world of, of abundance and a world of a, a healthy world, obviously, but a world that we don't have to fight over resources. Well, the, the stars of the universe, the sun produces scalar energy. You don't have to fight over resources. Wow. There's an infinite supply of scalar energy. And that's what so much of our problems are predicated upon, you know, money, resources, land um wow yeah. um fascinating um can I, I just want to go off topic uh it's it's one of my favorite questions to ask uh you don't even have to answer it but it's a one word uh, answer uh but i like it um i think i know the answer uh but uh just having you know been with you for a little bit so uh Excluding family or friends, somebody living or dead you'd like to spend a day with? Mm. I, uh, excluding somebody who's dead is what you're saying. No, correct? no. Uh, oh, somebody living God, or God, dead. I, I, I'd love to spend a day with God, Jesus. Yeah, yeah I, I knew the answer even before. Or, or the Blessed Virgin Mary. I'm, I'm for, for the benefit yeah. of the audience, I'm a Catholic. Uh, and and we talked about my experience uh, yes. with Mary, uh, that that I write about, and, and 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 but I knew the answer because I I I'm getting to know you, so I, I knew that. But anyway, great answer. And by the way, that probably would be for me too. Um, you know, I've had I don't, I'm, it's heavy stuff. I've had dreams where I'm sitting uh, in a valley uh, on a rock watching somebody speak um wearing a toga kind of thing uh yeah i've had dreams like that but nothing but anyway moving along um uh can you do you have any unique experiences uh, like in your lab of having worked with yeah. um, this scalar energy yeah. <clears throat> i <clears throat> I live in do, by the way you do have a lab and if people yes, go to the people go to the website there's a whole bunch of pictures of you and your laboratory yeah the, these are scientific instruments i'm not controlling electricity i'm controlling scalar energy and in and of itself this this is really monumental that the instruments that have been developed over the past century to control scalar energy so i live in the state of florida and when there is a, a, a local lightning storm, a thunderstorm, my instruments start to autonomously spark wow. lightning bolts, wow. lightning bolts, meaning what? <clears throat> the scalar energy from a lightning bolt is communicating with my instrument. And my instruments will, will then spontaneously emit a small, wow. very small, maybe half an inch okay. lightning bolt. Okay. It, it fascinated me the first time that happened, but it shows me that this is this is alive, and that this is a a vast and infinite communication system. So the scalar energy lightning from the clouds is communicating with my instrument, which is a scalar energy instrument, and everything that is communicating, the entire universe is communicating. Now, again, when this first started happening, when I was working. During a lightning storm in Florida, I said to myself, this is proof that that this instrument is capable of an infinite number of instructions or communication. Because it reacted to the bolt. Yes. Yes. It, it, it started anytime there would be a lightning strike, my my instrument would strike back. Wow. That's a perfect communication system. I, I could not have planned that, Cal. Wow. Wow. Very, very interesting. Um, scalar energy is 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 not um, is not bound by um, time, time or distance. It's yeah. it's there. Yeah. Right? Let, let me let me explain. 
uh, for those in North America, let's say you're traveling from New York to LA. Well, there's there's different time zones as you go along. But that's the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, in the electromagnetic spectrum, you have New York and you have Los Angeles. In a scalar energy spectrum, those two cities connect. So there is no New York, or there is no Los Angeles, there is no distance between them, it's one point. So if LA and New York are one point, the, the time in a scalar energy environment is the immediate moment. It's the instantaneous moment, the I am. There is no time frame. There are no time zones. There's only one time zone. I'll give the audience a- Like a now. It's yes. Like, the, it's, it's the power God, of now. The only yes, when God the Father said, I am, he means I am now in the present moment. Which, which would incorporate past, present, and future. But in the scalar energy moment, it's always the I am, the immediate moment, because there is no past, there is no future. There's only one time, the present. Okay, I, I'll give the audience a, an indication of that in application. There's a man by the name of Grabenikov, a Russian scientist, and he developed the scalar energy platform in which he could levitate. And when he was levitating on this platform, his wristwatch, he had his wristwatch on, time did not advance on his wristwatch because his wristwatch did not recognize time. When you're in a scalar energy environment, there is no time. So, so Grabenikov in this scalar energy paradigm was outside of time. It was Time could not have any uh, impact upon him. And, in so doing, when he observed his wristwatch, it never advanced during these, these anti-gravity flights, proving that when you're in a scalar energy environment, he was in this scalar energy environment of anti-gravity, his wristwatch never advanced. Now, when he returned uh, back to terra firma, he realized that he'd been you know, aloft for two or three hours, and that he did not age for those two to three hours. Wow. Time stood still. Wow. No aging. I funny, I just interviewed someone who talked about the future and, and aging, and someday we'll be able to flip a switch and kind of reverse that whole thing. Right. So I'll go back to 18, no knee problems. Um, you know, um fats. Fascinating stuff. Wow. It is. Um, it, it is. Yeah. And this is what Tesla discovered. Tesla, with his scalar energy instruments, Tesla understood that this uh, scalar energy was the cause of time and space. And if, you, if you're the cause, then you're not subject to time and space. I want to make that very clear to the audience. So a scalar energy paradigm is not subject to time and space because it's scalar energy's king. Everything is subject to scalar energy. Well, really, really fascinating. Um, scalar, you can explain your scalar energy balances um, the seven chakras and, yes. and the 12 uh, meridian points? Yes, correct. Why? I've seen photographs of scalar energy in slow motion, if you will, by, by if you will, freezing the, the, the picture frame. It's a double helix. It's a double helix. And if, if we look back on uh, various cultural expressions, we consider the seven chakras to be spinning vortices. So it's apparent to me that the spinning vortex of scalar energy will reprogram the spinning vortices of our seven chakras, which gives credence to the notion <clears throat> that chakras are an information system. They are. What type of information? Scalar energy. What drives the chakras? Scalar energy. So what are chakras? They're seven scalar energy information points. Wow. Wow. Um... Scalar energy uh, is to humans. You can explain this. Scalar energy is to humans as photosynthesis 
is to plants. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, this, what this is future think now or present day yeah. think. Okay. Well, what I'm trying to impart is this. Um, by way of example, my predecessor, a man by the name of Galen Hieronymus, um, a, a scalar energy researcher, was able to grow plants in the dark with scalar energy. Wow. Hieronymus had an antenna, a scalar energy antenna on his home. <clears throat> he delivered that scalar energy signal by a wire into potted plants in his basement. And the basement was devoid of light. And that, that if you will, apparatus was able to grow plants in the dark, chlorophyll and all. Wow. And, and Hieronymus concluded, and so do I, that the main mover, that the animating force behind photosynthesis has to be scalar energy. See, Hieronymus was able to grow plants in the dark without visible light, without electromagnetic light, in the dark, in his basement. And the only animating force was scalar energy. So it, he's concluded, well, I've concluded, I, I think I've never met him, but I, or Tessa for that matter, but I think both men would concur with my thought that scalar energy is the first energy, the primary energy of the universe, and that electricity and magnetism have their interplay, which are subsets. It's a subset of scalar energy. It's not the animating force. So the animating force is always scalar energy. The subset, the derivative is electricity and magnetism, they're, they're all needed, they're all necessary, but the main mover, the, the primary agent of all change, of all action is scalar energy. So interesting. Um, and, and scalar energy gave birth to life from, you know, the the sun and, the, and that. And I'm just trying to, to process that put it into simpler terms for me to um, kind of understand. Um, going a little bit away from the heavy, not <laughs> necessarily too light, but uh, in, in uh, I had asked you if we could, um, you can give us some input. Again, I extracted these things from your blog, which is endless, mm -hmm. uh, endless. And there were a few things that resonated with me. So if you can make a few comments on intermittent fasting. Uh, I myself practice intermittent fasting. Um, you know, many cultures have, have placed good, uh, a great deal of thought, and, and, and if you will, by way of experience on fasting or some type of intermittent fasting. Now, but, but maybe I should, as, as a, a, a clue the audience in, this is not for everybody. And if you're a youngster, you still need to eat three meals a day. I'm not a youngster. I'm 62 years of age. So, uh, intermittent fasting or, or fasting in general, I recommend it. And, and if as long as there's not a, a, a problem, medical condition, I, I would say to most people, find out what works for you. You might, you might want to cut back on a meal and only eat half the meal. If you can miss a meal entirely, go ahead and do that. If you can, for an extended period of time, give up alcohol, say for, for a week, go ahead and do that. If you can cut out sweets, uh, sugar in your diet for a few days, go ahead and do that. And uh, there's so many benefits to, to, to uh, speak to fasting, but you know, go into this in an intelligent fashion and make sure it works for you. Don't, don't harm yourself. I totally uh, concur with you because I'm also doing intermittent fasting and I saw my cardiologist yesterday. He's a friend of mine, and and he noticed uh, I lost forty pounds Good for you. in a, in a year, and it was all intermittent fasting. Uh, I I don't even smell uh, alcohol. Um, I won't even smell it. Uh, so uh, so everything you said, it's like oh wow, I I do the same thing, and guess what? It works. And then you get to a point. You get to a point. Uh, and and I listen. I'm a big guy. Uh, you know, one time I was 350 pounds. Uh, you know, 130 pounds ago. And I love, you know, I love eating and I love food. And uh, uh, I, I don't. It 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 really shrinks your stomach. A it, it, it it does. And and I've I've lost weight over the years by intermittent fasting. And if you do 
cut back on a meal or you can miss a meal, you'll appreciate food much more. And you'll, you will realize now, if you're an adult, not a, as a youngster, you need your three meals a day. You'll realize many people don't need to eat three big meals a day. That's a fallacy, especially you know later in life when you're an adult. You can cut back. You, one of your meals, you can cut the portion by 40%, 50%. But you have to experiment. You know, it's taken me years to experiment. Try it. You know, see what works for you. Everybody's different, so I, I can't give you a. Of course, I can't give you the the it's, diet it's, because everybody has a different genotype and phenotype. So, but people can go to your to your blog and the website and, and look that up, and you have some things that you 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 talk about. You're right. Everybody's got to make their own. You know, I did what works for me, and and that's fine. Um, Changing subjects, uh, if you want to comment a little bit about something I don't lose a lot of sleep about, but it scares me, uh, black holes. Mm -hmm. uh, black holes are friendly, and God has everything under control. If you look at a black hole, there's tremendous energy, correct? And, and a lot of people say that black hole is, seems to be a never-ending source of, of energy of, or power. And uh, some people say that that's how uh, uh, God or creation is recreating by taking the old and making it new. Well, all of those statements really, really dovetail into one explanation, which is scalar energy. Scalar energy is an infinite energy. It does not experience entropy. The only way you can drive a black hole without losing the power, without losing the energy, without experience entropy with scalar energy. So I haven't seen every black hole in the universe, but I can guarantee you the greater majority are powered by scalar energy because it's an infinite energy. There is no loss of energy. There is no diminution of signal. It, it does not degrade. So next, many times astrophysicists have looked at um, black holes and they say, well, it's anomalistic. It's, it doesn't behave like electricity or magnetism. They, they say it's an anomaly. We, we, don't, we can't quite understand it. You're right. You cannot explain a black hole by way of electromagnetic theory. It's not electromagnetic. It's a scalar energy force field or a plasma field. And, and uh, an another instance, um, you know, many times you see this, this black hole, it's rotating like a torque, well, almost a, in, a, in a corkscrew or, or Perhaps it's a, tor a toroidal in, in, in composition. Well, again, a double helix describes a scalar wave. So maybe that, that vortex of a, of a black hole is caused by the vortex of scalar energy. You know, keep in mind, electricity can be, can be graphed out on a, on a, on a uh, oscilloscope and it's, it's a sine wave. It's not a vortex. My predecessor, a man by the name of Galen Hieronymus, he theorized on this is back in the 30s and 40s when, when we really didn't have the advanced scientific instrumentation. Hieronymus theorized that scalar energy moved as a corkscrew. He called it a corkscrew because he realized this was an electricity. And he was trying to understand how you can move energy, not as a waveform, but as a corkscrew, which is what? The vortex. He was right. He theorized correctly back in the 20s and 30s without the advanced instrumentation that we have today. Now, it, it's really a, it, it's a fait accompli. Scalar energy is, is a corkscrew or it's the double helix. It's the spiral. Interesting. Um, two more little quick little blurbs uh, again from my exploring your 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 blog uh, uh comments on, on colonizing mars you know it, it's been floated and uh, here's the easy way to do it if, if we're going to travel to to a, a planet I, I propose we do it with a scalar energy vehicle not with an electromagnetic well you know i have got nothing against these high-powered rockets but you know, the, the fuel consumed is... Right. The is, fuel you'll need. Is so scalar energy just takes us there. Boom. Yes. Well, scalar energy simply will capture energy from the stars. And you don't have to worry about running yeah. out of fuel. This is not uh, jet fuel. This is not rocket fuel. This is energy from the stars. 
this is what Tesla was working on later in his life. Tesla was working with, with towers. He had a tower in Long Island, Warden Cliff Tower. And if you look closely at that tower, there's a gigantic dome of copper surmounting this, this tower. It was a copper dome. But you look all around, and this is in Long Island back in um, 2000, excuse me, 1901, 1902, 1903. There's no wires. There's no electrical wires. There's no power plant around. And a lot of people were, were puzzled. Why would Tesla come out here into Long Island, which at that time was country, and build this tower that was removed from any power plant and have no wires attached to Wardenclyffe? He was getting the energy from the stars. He did not have to worry about telephone poles and, and substations and armatures and, and turbines and pistons. He, that, that was passe. By that time, Tesla was able to capture this kinetic energy from the stars. And that's where we were going with wireless, free energy from the stars. So what is a black hole? A black hole is a wireless, free energy from the stars. It's the vortex. Uh, the last thing uh, that I wanted to ask you, and I was looking at it. Actually, I was taking uh, I took notes from when I was exploring your website uh, and your blog. Um, the, the subject of spiritual awakening. My only thing is my own uh, observation on this, because I told you I'm pretty spiritual very spiritual uh, even though i go to football and basketball games i don't know if that diminishes my spirituality but no, uh, it does. fine no we need recreation no. we sure do and and i love uh you know my football and basketball i love rutgers and 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 all of that but spiritual awakening my my own observation is every one of us has it uh in us we have to we have to uh, shoot up our antenna uh, into to raise our antenna to receive, mm -hmm. and and the higher and the more you raise that antenna, the more you get. That's my own observation. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, well, you're a normal human being. I, I would strongly recommend people be normal human beings. Be you know, be active. Don't don't lock yourself in, in a laboratory. I certainly don't. I research a lot, but I still have an act. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and, you know, my, uh, absor absorbing your vibes, you're just a regular guy from New Rochelle, you know, yeah, yeah. um, we talked about New Rochelle, uh, and, and, and that's, I, I probably, this is a great way, uh, I, I actually just to show everybody this graphic, which I'm going to have embedded, you know, part of the scale of light, uh, uh, the whole thing. Um, this has been great. You, you. You've been really gracious, Tom, uh, and you shared this. And, and and yeah, it sure makes you think. Uh, it sure makes you think. And and again, uh, we the species don't know very much. We think we do, but we don't. Well, and even the whole notion of positivity—I don't know how that fits into the notion of scalar energy—but even positivity changes this whole this organ around. Yeah. Um, you're right. Po positivity is a scalar function. It, it's it's a scalar instruction, and that's really the animating force behind positive thinking or wow. spiritual thinking. Wow. You know, you, you you set the intention, the instruction, and then the result follows therefrom. Wow, that's a great way to that's a great way to do a wrap. Um, I, I can't thank you enough. Wishing you merry, happy, healthy, all, all good things. Uh, I'm here 12 hours a day in this chair, which is actually worn out. I, I had to get towels to wrap around the arms. Uh, so anytime you want to come back in any shape, way, form, any kind of energy, come back because I, I find you fascinating. Uh, and I find scalar energy fascinating. And there's a kinship. Uh, and, and that's all good stuff. So uh, again, thank you. You're a busy guy, I know. And, and we've been planning this for a long time. But thank you so much. Don't leave. Um, uh, any last comments? Um, it's uh, <clears throat> I'll leave the audience with this. Everybody is a scalar energy expert. The mind and the heart function on scalar energy. Brain waves and your heartbeat are produced by scalar energy. 
Do you ever think of what gives you the brain waves? What's the animating force? It's scalar energy. What causes your heart to beat? It's scalar energy, scalar light. So everybody with the mind and the heart is a scalar energy being. You are working in God's image, if you will. Think about that. Wow. Um, thank you. Thank you for being so gracious and sharing that. And, and I like to say to be continued and we're going to sign off. Thank you, Tom. Don't leave, but I'm signing off. <laughs>